What's up everybody? Welcome to the video. Chris Pinnell here. We are talking week one of the NFL season for DraftKings and FanDuel. Early look edition. If you're new here, what we like to do is go position by position, looking at a handful of players from each spot. We'll go over stacks. We'll try to build a lineup as we progress through it. More so for a single entry tournament build. Then at the end, if I have it up and running, I run the optimizer to see who's populating the most as of right now. And also, I like to take a very numbers-based approach to all of this. I am not someone that has any bias takes or gut feelings because those don't exist. We're simply looking at the data and trying to analyze it and put it together for what makes sense for fantasy football purposes. So if that sounds good to you and it feels like we're going to make a good fit, make sure you leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel if you're brand new. Let's get to work this year. And as always, we'll start with the quarterback position because this is the foundation of our lineup because the quarterback we select is pretty much going to lock up quite a few spots for the rest of our build because someone like me that plays in tournaments, you want to stack for the most part. Now, there's some quarterbacks you can get away with that if they are mobile and they don't technically need a stacking option like Josh Allen. You could play him naked. That is perfectly fine, but if I'm playing tournaments, I still try to stack the best I can with my quarterbacks. Usually either one or two pass catching options, and then it's not a necessity, but quite often I will use a run back option if it's just a really good game environment. Like for example, if I'm using Tua, I could play Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, I could run it back with somebody on Jacksonville, like an Evan Ingram. That would perfectly make sense, but just right there, we're using up like five spots just because of the quarterback I selected, because it kind of gears us into a certain direction. Also, if we go with an expensive quarterback, we know we're going to spend down at other positions. Meanwhile, if I play Baker Mayfield, I can spend up at other positions. So it just completely dictates the rest of our lineup. So that's why we're going to start here. And really quick, I should mention if you guys do want access to the spreadsheet or model that I am showing you guys on YouTube, there's a lot more to it on my end over on the Patreon. I project out the entire slate for all the positions, for all the players, not just the few that I'm showing you in this player pool. I do ownership projections. I have an optimizer, cheat sheets, going over cash games, tournaments. I do have all the stacks projected out here so you can see which combination ends up being the highest stacks and their ownership and whatnot. All right, but anyway, let's talk some of these quarterbacks here. Up top, Josh Allen. He's going to be the top projected quarterback on this slate. He is for me. I have him over 20 fantasy points. He's my QB1, and this is going to be a pretty good game environment. The Bills also have one of the highest implied team totals on the week. At 27, six points spread in their favor at home, 48 point over under, which we don't have any games in the 50s, at least a week before the slate starts. Obviously, guys, things can change. I'm recording this on the Friday beforehand. So if someone gets ruled out and I didn't talk about them, that's why. All right. You know, they tell me in the comments. I'll, I'll understand that things have changed since then. And hopefully you guys are able to distinguish between that. But I know we've lost Stephon Diggs in this offense, but let's be honest, second half of that season, he kind of was just really non-existent at that point, and Josh Allen was still putting up numbers. And even his passing prop, it's at 247.5 this week, which is still right on his average, so it doesn't seem like he should miss a beat from those Stephon Diggs. They have Keon Coleman now, Killa Shakur I think is pretty good, and then Curtis Samuel in that offense now. And obviously you have the talented Dalton Kincaid, and then James Cook out of the backfield. So I still think the Bills offense should be humming here, and this is a pretty good spot Versus the Arizona Cardinals, they were 25th versus quarterbacks last year. And obviously, I know these matchup things can change from year to year with obviously new players coming in. and Just, you know, so don't get married to the matchups from last season. But it was a plus matchup. And Vegas does think this is going to be a pretty good game. And the one thing that makes Josh Allen elite compared to other quarterbacks, obviously he has a rocket arm, but he is extremely talented on the ground. 0.9 rushing touchdowns per game last year. Nearly four points per game, specifically from rushing yards, which is another built-in passing touchdown. So yeah, he might have lost his wide receiver one, but I'm fine with Josh Allen as my QB1 this week. Dropping down 500 bucks to CJ Stroud. He seems like a really good tournament option this week, mainly because I feel like the floor could be lower, but he has unlimited options to get the ball to now. Speaking of Stephon Diggs, he got shipped off here to Houston, and they now kind of have like 1A, 1B, and 1C. On their offense with Nico Collins, Tank Dell, who got a touchdown, I think, on his first target of preseason. Then, obviously, you still have Stephon Diggs. And CJ Stroud was awesome last year as a rookie, nearly 270 passing yards per game. Didn't turn the ball over much, and 8.2 yards per attempt. And with the addition of Stephon Diggs, I know he can have his issues, but he's still a very talented player. And I like this game on the road in the Dome in Indy. Only a 2.5 point spread, 48.5 point over under. I'm going to like a lot of options in this game. So, yeah, CJ Stroud makes a lot of sense in tournaments. The wide receivers are going to be very tough, I think, to nail early on. So if you are playing tournaments, I would try to just sprinkle my exposure over towards them. Uh, Tua in this Miami-Jacksonville game. I live in Florida, southern Florida. So give you guys a heads up. I believe there's a tropical wave coming within the next week. So maybe this could affect the game if it's really just treacherous conditions. I don't know what's going to happen with it. Just giving a heads up. Something to at least think about. I'm not usually one that will fade anything because of rain. But if it's going to be extremely windy, that's when things start to get pretty difficult. So just throwing that out there. But as of right now, 
This is the highest over-under game of the week at 49.5, three and a half point spread, at least on the main slate. I believe one of the primetime games is in the 50s, might be the Sunday night game, which is on the FanDuel main slate, but not on the DraftKings main slate, which sucks because that FanDuel slate with the 30 game of the Lions and the Rams is going to be a banger. But we know with Tua, he's going to be pretty efficient because he has Tyree Kill, and Tyree Kill can make your life very easily, especially when Jalen Waddle is your wide receiver two out there. And this Miami offense is fun. You have Raheem Mostert in the backfield with Devon Chan, who is a cheat code. Efficiency wise, 26.5 implied team total here for Miami. If you're using him in tournaments, I have no issue with that. He does not offer you any rushing upside whatsoever, which is kind of the main concern. So the floor is a bit lower. But this is a plus matchup versus the Jaguars, who were allowing the fourth most points per game to quarterbacks last season. So I think two is fine in GPPs. Anthony Richardson is probably your best cash game option at quarterback this week. You can also play him in tournaments, sure. But I think the ownership is going to be pretty high. I believe I have him and Josh Allen as my highest predicted own quarterbacks as of right now but he is dirt cheap on DraftKings Fandle complete different scenario but like Josh Allen he offers you a ton of rushing upside he averaged one rushing touchdown per game last year which was a very small sample size like two and a half to three games leave his rushing prop this week is at 44.5 so again like Josh Allen that's just a built-in passing touchdown floor just based off of some of the rushing upside and obviously I would say it's at least a 50-50 shot he gets into the end zone I have it projected over that right now but he's my second highest projected quarterback this week. And at 6,300 on DraftKings, you pretty much want to play him in cash games. And our last two, if you need some more value options, obviously I think Anthony Richardson is the best value quarterback, but if you're trying to get away from the chalk a little bit, Jaden Daniels and Baker Mayfield, both in the same game facing off. I think this game has some pretty sneaky upside. It's only a 43 point over under. And like I said, watch the weather in Florida next week. Maybe it misses, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. But three and a half point spread here. Both these defenses were extremely leaky last year, especially two quarterbacks. I know it's not going to be a one-to-one like what happened last year is not meaning it's going to happen this year. And obviously in week one, there can be a lot of surprises. So one of those slates where maybe you don't want to be too heavy on things once we get a lay of the land and you can feel more comfortable. But last year, the uh, commanders allowed the most fantasy points for United quarterbacks. And then the Tampa Buccaneers allowed the six most. So I don't hate either at these price points. Jaden Daniels, we know he's got some rushing upside. So the floor is going to be a bit better than Baker Mayfield. But Baker does have Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and the rookie wide receiver to get the ball to as well, and Rashad White out of the backfield. So if you're just looking for two junkers down here for some cheap stacks, Jay McDaniels with Terry McLaurin running back with Mike Evans, or even double running back with a Chris Godwin, or vice versa with Baker Mayfield and his receivers with Terry McLaurin, I don't hate that. And no, I do not have Caleb Williams on here. And like I said, there's players I'm not going to have on here that I think are playable, but I wanted to mention, since everyone loves him, Price Picks does as well. They set him at 0.5 passing yards for this week as their promo. Make sure you go over to Price Picks, hit the over on that, and pair with one of your favorite props, which we'll go over in a little bit. And make sure you use promo code CPEN if you're a first time user to get a deposit match bonus up to $100. All right, so let's move over to our lineup here. And guys, please do not copy and paste the lineup. I don't know if I'm going to play this. I am just building this on the fly to make sense for the roster construction that I typically use for a single entry tournament build. You guys can apply this process to your own favorite plays and build your own lineups. And if you are someone that seeks out lineups to steal on YouTube, Twitter, whatever it is, more than likely you're going to be a losing player. You are a losing player and it's just not something smart you should do. So you should stop that. Anyway, for entertainment purposes and educational purposes only, we're going to scroll down. Amazing options here with Josh Allen, Anthony Richardson. I mean, those are really just two of my favorite plays, but let's make it more fun. We'll go with the rookie. Jaden Daniels, we'll see what he's got. I think he's got like a 40 rushing yards prop right now and 220 passing yards plus matchup. And I think we can make some pretty fun stacks with him. He's so cheap, it's going to make it work. All right, moving on to running backs, which I hate talking about running backs because they all kind of suck outside of a few. Obviously, Christian McCaffrey's always OP, but he's on the slate. Jameer Gibbs is awesome. Uh, Jonathan Taylor is good. But I mean, like outside of a handful of running backs, it feels like every other starter is within like 12 to 15 points for their projection. So it's really hard to make much of a difference between them. But we'll try to do it anyway. So Jonathan Taylor up top, if you have the money for him, he does have the highest rushing yards prop of the week going up against the Houston Texans. Obviously, I'm talking main slate when I say that. I haven't really looked at the other slates yet. But last year, obviously, he missed the early portion. But 17 rushing attempts per game, 75 rushing yards. But keep in mind, Anthony Richardson was not in, so that could take away from Jonathan Taylor. And then Jonathan Taylor could take away a little bit from Anthony Richardson. Could be a little bit of a yin and a yang there. But either way, it's a good matchup versus the Houston Texans. Only two and a half points spread. They're playing at home. I don't see a reason not to like Jonathan Taylor. The issue with him is, though, is that he just doesn't really get much work in the passing game. So the floor is a bit lower if he doesn't get those rushing touchdowns. Bijan Robinson, an awesome talent. And hopefully more work this year. Still average 18 opportunities per game last season. But 12.6 rushing attempts was, it's too low for Bijan Robinson. That needs to definitely be up. There's a new quarterback in town this year with Kirk Cousins, who should propel the offense. 
a little bit higher than the likes of Desmond Ritter, you would think. Kind of an ugly looking game, 40 and a half point over under, but that's fine for me to use running backs. I'm not rushing to play any of the quarterbacks really in this game, Russell Wilson versus Kirk Cousins. If I had to pick one, it would be Kirk, but not a lot of interest there. But what I liked last year was the five and a half targets per game, 16.8% target share matchup versus Pittsburgh's pretty so-so. It's obviously not my favorite in the world, but he's not overly expensive and he's got 20 point upside. James Cook getting into the mid-range running backs. I do like him quite a bit. Arizona was putrid versus the run last season. Allowed the most fantasy points per game at 29, 120 rushing yards, and also nearly half a receiving touchdown per game as well. And he had decent volume last year, 18 touches per game, and this is a projected game script of them being favorites at home, so they should be leading. Six-point favorites here, 27-point implied team total. I think there's a decent chance he can find the end zone. Really just going to depend on Josh Allen wants to steal a goal line touchdown or not, which he obviously does do quite often, but I think Cook is an excellent option here in any format. Alvin Kamara, probably one of the cash game running backs this week versus Carolina at home. They're four-point favorites. He has receiving upside. He gets dump offs from Derek Carr, so that's going to keep the floor quite nice. 6.6 targets per game last year, nearly six catches, close to a 19% target share, and over 20 opportunities per game. And also, the Carolina Panthers were allowing the six most points per game running backs last season so i think kamara is probably one of the safest running backs you can play this weekend uh, joe mix a new team this year on the houston texans so uh, went from an offense that can score points to an offense that can score points 25.5 implied team total two and a half point spread if you can just lunge into the end zone that's all we're asking here 66 i would rather play kamara though i think the floor is much higher there raheem mostert you could add in devon chan as well i just don't want to put them both talk about every running back both are viable here I think Mostert has a decent chance to get you a rushing touchdown. It's obviously a favorable game script as far as just being in a healthy game environment. But putting up a lot of points here, 26.5 implied team total, three and a half point favorites. At home, we know he's always going to be super efficient. He's not going to get us 20 touches, but he should get us around 15 over rushing touchdown per game last year, nearly five yards per carry. Also, pretty solid matchup versus the Jaguars. Not the best in the world, but it's not bad either. Rashad White, also one of my favorite cash game running backs. I think him and Alvin Kamara feel like the same exact play, and they're probably going to be the ones that people get to the most. I wouldn't be surprised about. I think I have them as the highest predicted owned running back as of right now. Obviously, a lot can change. It's over a week away till these games start. But as of right now, I think Rashad White, Alvin Kamara, probably the best way to go in cash games. Rashad White was not efficient at all last year, but he got to the opportunities, 19.8 per game. 4.1 4.1 targets, 15.7 rushing attempts. Obviously, wasn't great with them, but good matchup versus Washington. Overall, their just defense was not that great last season. Maybe it improves this year, but still had the fifth most points for getting to running backs and the floor. Like I said, floor is nice. James Conner going against Buffalo. Averaged 80 rushing yards per game last year. I definitely think that's going to go down. I believe his props are right around 55 to 60 yards. I have him lower than 80 rushing yards this week, but still a 6,200 bucks for a guy that's going to see 15 plus touches with a couple of those being targets. I will take it versus Buffalo. Don't obviously love being six-point dogs, but that could just mean some extra dump-offs. Uh, I mean, it's all right. There's nothing really amazing I can say about guys like James Conner, Kenneth Walker. Walker does have one of the higher rushing yards props. I believe it's at 64.5 over on prize picks. They're six-point favorites here. Playing at home, favorable game script. Amy know the Broncos, to start the year last year, were so bad versus the run. Like, the Miami Dolphins definitely kind of shattered that versus them a little bit. They did get better as the season progressed. But they still finished the year allowing 28 points per game, two running backs, which was the second most, only behind the Arizona Cardinals. The Walker, if he can just lunge into the end zone, I think we can probably get us close to 15 fantasy points. I will take that. All right, back to our build. Since we went with a really cheap quarterback, we probably could afford guys like Jonathan Taylor and Bijan Robinson. If we can at the end, we could always upgrade. But I'm gonna try to stick with the mid-range here. So I'm gonna plug in James Cook because since I am not going with Josh Allen for this build, it probably means I'm not getting to really any of the other options. And I want exposure to that offense. They're going to put up points. So in this example, I'm really hoping that the passing attack isn't blowing up for 40 points here. So if they're going to score in this example, I would hope it's James Cook. So I think it makes sense to play James Cook here. And then I don't really know. I'll just plug in Alvin Kamara, 6700 bucks. Makes sense to me. And then we'll move on to wide receivers. All right, moving on to our pass catchers. I know it can look very intimidating. We have well over 20 players listed here. But I'm not going to talk about 20 players. Because I know a lot of people like to dive into the wide receiver versus cornerback matchup and all that fun stuff and matchups in general. I think it's highly overrated. I think it's kind of a waste of time, honestly, just trying to dig too deep into that. There's just so much random variance that can happen during an NFL game where I just don't think it matters. Like if Tyreek Hill, I'm not saying it's a bad matchup this week versus Jacksonville overall. I mean, wide receivers did well versus them last year. But let's say they were giving up the fewest points to wide receivers. Like 
Is that somewhat disappointing to see? Sure, but that doesn't mean Tyreek Hill can't have a good game. Like it's, I don't know. I just think people that spend too much time on that it's kind of wasting their time. You could agree with me on that. You could disagree. I am fine with it either way. Do whatever helps you. But I am not someone that cares at all about that stuff. The, what I try to do here to make this more simple is we're just trying to correlate our lineup. So if you are playing Tua, look at Tyreek Hill. Look at Jalen Waddle. You're coming back with someone on Jacksonville. They have that new wide receiver, Brian Thomas, who should be a stud. They lost Calvin Ridley this year, but he should kind of slide nicely into his place here. You can also look at the other options. Christian Kirk's still going to be there, manning the slot. You have Gabe Davis now, who is always just a home run hitter. He's either going to get to zero or 20 points, but he does get zeros quite often. But that was in Buffalo. Maybe things will be different here over in Jacksonville. I do want to mention, like, you can't stack your entire lineup. Don't think that. You're obviously going to play someone that has nothing to do with your lineup sometimes. If you're playing cash games, you don't have to stack. There's always going to be one-offs. And if Jamar Chase plays, I know we're having contract issues right now. He just isn't practicing. But if he plays, he is only 700 bucks. And projection-wise, he is nearly on par with guys like Tyreek Hill, CeeDee Lamb. But for some reason, he's $1,000 cheaper. I have them all projected close to within 20 fantasy points. And if you're going to give me a $1,000 discount, I think Jamar Chase makes a lot of sense. Is the game environment good versus New England? Not at all, but they still have a 25 point implied team total. I don't love that they're eight and a half point favorites, only a 41 point over under. And New England games just tend to be very boring, but again, 700 bucks. So he would be a fine cash game option if you can afford him. But obviously, if he happens to not play because of contract issues, we have T. Higgins who would get a bump. Andre Iasiva, I don't know how to say his name. I'll learn to say it if Jamar Chase is out, but as of right now, I, I don't know. But I do know he's $3,000, and he will be in a role where I guess he'd basically be the wide receiver too at that point. And that has enough value for me from Joe Burrow where he would definitely make a lot of sense. I would see him being pretty popular at that point if Jamar Chase happened to be out. You are someone like me that really likes this Tampa Bay-Washington game. I, do I think it's going to be as good as the Bills versus the Cardinals? No, but these guys are not priced like that. But I think this game definitely has the ability to pop off. So if you were someone who likes a sports bet, you should really consider checking out our sponsor of the show, Outlier. They make betting easy and offer all the tools you need on game day to help make yourself the best selections with all the data you would ever need. And I'm a data person, and I'm sure most of you watching this probably are as well. But they have all the props you can need, looking at rushing, receiving, passing, touchdown scores. And these are for all the games, but I'm just signifying this one as of right now. Has matchup summaries over here, has their injury report for this game, other insights as well. So if you just want some quick hitting information, Mike Evans has exceeded 66 and a half receiving yards in five of his last six games at home, averaging 98.5 receiving yards on game. So this game is at home. It's a plus matchup versus Washington. That is something to consider. And if you do want to bet that, it shows you the best odds available. You click on that and it'll take you right to your slip sheet, add to your picks, and then you can head right over there, make your bets right on the site. It will show you the current best positive EV bets. I'll show you current boost out there that you might have missed and obviously a lot more. If you want to check it out, you can use the link down below in the description. Check out a free trial. I know you're going to love it. And if you're someone that takes sports betting serious, this is definitely a really nice tool to add to your arsenal. And I already talked about the quarterbacks for most of these guys. So I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Like, yeah, if you're playing Stroud and you're probably going to want at least one of Nico Collins, uh, Tank Dell or Stephon Diggs. I don't think you guys need me to tell you that. If you're playing Josh Allen, Kilo Shakur, Keon Coleman, all options. Now, I did not talk about Justin Herbert. so. The rookie, also Joshua Palmer, DJ Shark, I think are all viable options. Joshua Palmer is probably my favorite. As of right now, he is projecting pretty well for his price point. I believe he's only at yeah, 5,200 bucks. I think he makes a lot of sense there. And then also down low, I think Jalen McMillan might be a fine tournament option. Again, if something happens with Chase, I think people will flock to the just free 3K player. But McMillan, I mean, if you're looking for just a, probably a guy that's not going to be owned whatsoever, as part of a Baker Mayfield stack or just game stacking that one in general. I think he's fine. Also Mitchell with Anthony Richardson. A lot of people will just go with Michael Pittman if they are stacking. But they are, you don't really have to. He's certainly one of those a quarterbacks you can play naked, but I don't think Mitchell would be a bad option either. Oh, and almost forgot, Drake London. Probably one of the better cash game wide receiver options. He is only $6,000. And I know this game doesn't look amazing. Only a 40 and a half point over under. But we're at home in the Dome. Big upgraded quarterback. I know Kirk Cousins, Perk Cousins. He's not Josh Allen. He's not Patrick Mahomes, but he's definitely better than Desmond Ritter. I think everyone knows that. Better than Taylor Heineke. So only 6K. And that wide receiver group outside of Kyle Pitts, if you want to count him in that, is atrocious. We have McLeod, Darnell Mooney. It's, just, it's nasty. Because as of right now, I haven't projected for almost nine targets and right around 70 receiving yards. So, I mean, yeah, it's 6K. That, that does project very well. All right, back to our lineup here. We have Jaden Daniels. We're going to stack with him. We're going to stack that game up. 
Now, you don't have to stack with Jaden Daniels in general. Like, he's one of those quarterbacks you can play naked. And if you wonder what naked means, no, it does not involve our clothes. It means you just don't have to stack with him because he's a mobile quarterback. But for this example, we're going to do just that. So we're going to plug in Terry McLaurin, who is $5,600. Just going to get a healthy dose of targets. And then I'm going to run it with Mike Evans. We could use Chris Godwin if we need money. If we really need money, we could use the rookie wide receiver over there. I believe he's only $3,300. But we're going to lock that in for right now. We still have roughly $4,500 per player. I usually just play really cheap defense. So honestly, we shouldn't have many issues playing whoever the heck we want after this. All right, moving on to tight end. Typically a wasteland. We do not have Sam Laporta. We do not have Travis Kelsey, Dallas Goddard on this slate, George Kittle. So we're kind of just picking up the scraps here. I think the best option in cash games is probably Kyle Pitts. Big upgrade, like I said, with Kirk Cousins at quarterback. TJ Hawkinson, I think, is better than Kyle Pitts. But we know Cousins will target the tight end position, and Pitts, in theory, we know he's talented. So hopefully he can show it here with Kirk. I think it makes a lot of sense here, and he is my highest projected tight end, and he's also not the highest ex priced tight end. So yeah, that screams value. I assume he will be chalky. Uh, Trey McBride, if you're stacking that game up, we know how awesome he was last year, but with Marvin Harrison in town, obviously I don't think he's going to be as targeted. Uh, Dalton Kincaid, if you're playing Josh Allen and them, I mean, you're just game and stacking that one up. Same with Evan Ingram, stacking up Miami, stacking up Jacksonville. He's just an option. I don't think he's going to be as hyper-targeted as he was last year, where he had a 24% target share and 8.4 targets per game, but he's still going to be involved in the offense. Uh, Dalton Schultz is part of the Houston Indy stack. Uh, Kyle Pitts, we already mentioned. Hunter Henry. So Jacoby Brissett was named the quarterback for the New England Patriots, and while we have a putrid 16.3 implied team total, he will target the tight end position. So if you're just looking for a cheap guy, Henry's an option, but I, I would really try to get up to Pitts at that point. Otten, part of that game stack, and Zach Ertz, if you really want to feel pain, you can play him. He's really just a corpse at this point, though, at 3600 bucks, and they do have a rookie tight end. Draft from the second round, that's certainly going to try to be getting some playing time over Zach Ertz. I would say the leash is pretty short on the old man. All right, moving back over to our lineup. I used to break down defense, but honestly, just play the cheapest one possible any given week because no one can project defense well. If we look all the way to the bottom here, just to see what kind of money we have to work with. I want to plug my defense in now. We have 4450 before we do that. I like the Panthers at 2400 bucks. Should be an ugly game versus New Orleans, but I have Alvin Kamara, so it's not exactly the best correlation in the world, so I guess I'll pass on that. Jamar Chase is out. I wouldn't hate the Patriots defense, but I don't think the Chargers look bad here versus the Raiders. So I'll plug them in, sub 3K. I like Kyle Pitts at tight end, so we'll plug him in quick. He's only 42 or 46, 41. Somewhere around there, I don't see him. Yeah, 4600 here. So now we have 5150, which puts us in an interesting situation. So in the event that Jamar Chase happened to be out, we could play the 3K wide receiver. That would give us 7,300 bucks left, which really opens up the door of the likes of Nico Collins, Devon Chan, Michael Pittman, Stephon Diggs, ETN if we wanted. And obviously we could just kind of move a couple of things around. Or we could go more so mid-range. We wanted to play, say, Joshua Palmer, who I talked about earlier. Then in the flex, we have exactly 51 again. And you have other options that I think are pretty viable. Closer Kerr we talked about. Keon Coleman. Didn't talk about a few of these guys, but they're certainly in play. So I'll, I'll let you guys use your imagination for the last spot. But overall, the build concept makes sense to me here. So we have Jaden Daniels paired with Terry McLaurin, ran back with Mike Evans. That's our game stack there. We don't have any Buffalo Bills receiving exposure. So I played James Cook just to play some Bills. Alvin Kamara, I think, is an excellent option. Palmer, last piece fit. Chargers defense was extremely cheap. So I think for a single entry, that type of roster construction makes a lot of sense. With that being said, that's all I got to say to you guys. So if you enjoyed it, even if you didn't, make sure you like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so. If you guys have any questions, comments, feedback, whatever it may be, leave it down below. I'm more than happy to answer you. We wish you all the best. And I'll see you all next time.